Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we are going to put a Max ECU onto this classic Mini. It's running a CGA3DE, I believe that's the engine code. It's essentially the 1.4 engine from a K11 Nissan Micra. It's got an all-speed engineering uh, frame in there. The engine is already fitted out. It's been running um, on or off with a older British ECU that's been fitted. Um, Bill purchased the car. Um, has had nothing but running issues. He's had it tuned elsewhere, um, and he, on the way home, it just started misfiring and misbehaving, so he just got fed up with it. Contacted ourselves, asked about one of our conversions, so we are going to fit the Max ECU Street to this. Uh, it's because it's the later engine. Um, somebody has already fitted like an external coil pack, a Ford one. Um, we are gonna go to coil on plug because it's got a cam sensor in the end as well. It looks like the Bosch setup. Uh, I've never done one of these engines before, um, but you know, it's 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 basic enough engine. So uh, yeah, it should be quite interesting. Uh, most of the sensors on there look like Bosch. It's got some different bits and pieces on there. We've got like a, a speedometer you'd like to drive from the ECU and also an internal tachometer and a few little bits and pieces, but I'll run through that. The reason I'm gonna do a video on this is because you know, we, we do conversions like this day in, day out. But the reason I'm gonna do a video on this one is because I've got it here for a few days. Uh, and also I'm going to show how to build a, a dummy harness um, because quite a lot of people send us their harness or they send us something they'd like us to make for them uh, so this i'm going to show you how to make a dummy harness to post to me so that we can build you a nice harness and you can just plug it all in and turn the key and go it's just that easy right but yeah that's why i'm going to do a video so let's get started we'll pull out some of the old junk and see what's what uh, and then we'll lay in a harness of sorts a dummy harness uh, and then we'll build a proper harness from that all the old junk is now gone old harness is gone um, the old coil pack is gone all the leads um, I've removed the map sensor also um, so we're gonna move over to some TTL coils with this vehicle we're gonna have coil on plug the original coils um, I tried to find some information on them and it does look like they are like IGBT coils um, which is uh, which is high current ground switch so essentially the electronics to drive the the actual coils are directly controlled from the ECU. So all of the, the high current stuff is, is dealt with in the ECU. Max ECU uses um, a TTL system for its ignition coils, uh, which is transistor transistor logic from the top of the top of my head. Um, so we will be using probably Volkswagen coils. Um, I'll be honest, I keep the, the short, the medium and the long and the K20 coil here just labelled for, you know, we're banging these sorts of coils and all sorts of different stuff. And very often, either nobody's done it or they've just not, you know, um, recorded what they've done online, so I can't find it. Obviously, I've had a quick Google, can't find anything obvious. So we'll be using the long style Bosch Volkswagen coil in this instance. Um, they fit in there perfectly. I've just got to trim a piece of that rubber off the bottom and then they'll sit in nicely and they will seal, which is great news. Um, and they'll keep all of the high current stuff going on on the top of the spark plug at the way of the ECU. Uh, so yeah, just gonna trim some of this back now and just get all those fitted. Oh, I've got to order some more to be fair. This is my test one. So I better order four of those uh, and get them in there, um, job done. There we go, coil on plug, absolutely sorted. Just had to trim down a little bit off the sides there and then just sort of trim the rubber grommet down. But there we go. So we've got some, you know, easy, these are easy to get hold of. Absolutely any, you know, automotive um, parts supplier will be able to supply these. So, you know, from a reliability point of view, they're, 
they're pretty solid um you know they're 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 good for something silly like 300 horsepower per coil so we're not going to be anywhere near that with this little puppy but you know if a coil does break down you can go to the local parts or motor parts supplier and pick one up the old coil packs um what was on here is getting more and more difficult to get hold of because they were fitted to old fords you know in the 90s so these are fitted still um so they're still current uh, and you'll be able to get one absolutely anywhere and we can go fully sequential uh, ignition and fueling so you know and why not we've got a cam sensor we've got a crank sensor we just well make the use of it right it's funny um in the uk i don't know what it's like in other countries but um, when people are fitting aftermarket systems or certainly historically it just used to be like oh, how simple can we make it how much can we pull out of it you know we want to make this as you know as, as basic as possible and and every time they're losing a sensor they're making it shitter they're making it worse so if it's got a cam sensor there let's let's use it let's have fully sequential fuel injection yeah all right it's only a little bit more you know economical uh, a little bit better on idle perhaps maybe you won't even notice it but it's there we just as well use the stuff you know um you know it's the same with idle valves this hasn't got an idle valve someone's removed it at some point so we'll leave a connector there because what i don't want to do is uh you know encourage myself into another like sort of four or five hours of work making an idle valve to fit in there so i'll leave a connector there uh so like a, just a two pin connector just to like for a, a you know like a two wire valve uh and then you know like i say the fact that someone's removed it it's just it's frustrating really because you know you just made it worse you're going to start it in the morning and it's never going to be 100 percent like it should be oem but you know it is what it is i i do understand that people do it i just don't really understand why I just get like a a decent ems that'll actually deal with all of those bolt ons that you've got if anything like i like to add sensors in you know let's see what the oil pressure's doing let's see what the fuel pressure's doing let's let's log all those things you know so but you know it is what it is let's carry on <laughs> i've had my little whinge and i my little bitch <laughs> so we've got to build a dummy harness whether it's to post to me or to post to somebody else or, you know, you, maybe you want to build it in the conservatory out of the way because the garage is cold, I don't know. Um, but so essentially I'm going to use wire, but you can use string or whatever you want to use really, whatever you happen to have, which is plentiful and handy and doesn't cost a massive amount. Um, for me, you know, being able to sort of get a, a dummy harness through the post is brilliant. It allows for all of the lengths of where the coils are going to go, the injectors, where the lander is, where the ECU is going to go. I just use a bit of masking tape, jot down each end, lambda, injector one, TPS, all of that sort of stuff. And then just use some insulation tape for transitions. So you may want to come here and then split off four ways for the coils. Um, label every single thing that you do um, with that, um, you know, and then transitions with the insulation tape. That way it doesn't get all mixed up with the same tape everywhere because often by the time it's been in the post, it turns out in a bit of a mess. Um, so yeah, let's, let's zap something up now so that you can see what I mean. So once you've measured it all out and got all your labels done, you know, just make sure everything lines up to exactly where you want them to go. And then eventually you'll just get like a harness which you can post off and copy whatever you want to do. So let's go and build a harness. The Mini is going to end up with the Max ECU Street. So we've got the premium package here, which has got the wide band stickers, the three meter harness. Um, so this provides us with a good base to start our harness um, we can build them from scratch we've obviously got all the tooling for the molex cmc connector should we need to um, we usually have to when we're building some of the higher spec stuff with different types of cable um, so essentially we've now got to turn this into this so we've just basically built our harness in the same way we would to any other customer who's posted us their pattern uh, into this harness we built this using um you know all automotive products um we've used the harness that actually comes with the max ecu because it's the premium package we already had that uh, so yeah we can now get this bolted in um and make sure it works if you're interested in one of these harnesses but built from your pattern uh, we've got various um you know bits and pieces on our website on our web shop for four cylinders six cylinder if you want anything a bit special a bit different then just let us know but it gives an easy way to get your car up and running um with you know like a, a decent professional wiring harness harness is in now nothing really more to do in the engine bay the only thing i have done is uh is put a set of plugs in because the last ecu tune whatever the issue was has just totally screwed them 
Um, they're very, very black and very, very knackered. So we've thrown a set of new plugs in. Uh, so now all I've got to do is just wire in the taco uh, and then we'll just check for the crank and cam pattern because I have no idea what this is. As I say, I've not touched one of these engines before with the Max and certainly not running um, sequential with the cam sensor. So we're going to see what the pattern is. I know there's a 60 minus two because we've done a few in the past on various older ECUs many days ago. Uh, so we know roughly where our you know, I'll crank references, but I have no idea what a cam sensor is or what it is even. Might be a funny pattern, who knows? So let's have a look at that. Okay, so ECU's powered up. Um, it's done a firmware update. It's really common to have to do a firmware update because um, Max ECU send out lots and lots of uh, firmware updates. So keep us up to date. Um, there's always something interesting going on, so make sure you update it, but also make sure you follow the instructions for doing such a thing. Um, unplugging coils and various other bits and pieces, but just make sure that you're aware. I usually fit a DT connector near the ECU, or DTM, depending on what we're doing, um, which has just got the TACO wire, so that's GPO8. I've calibrated a TACO um, just by, you know, essentially using test mode in the TAC, in TAC output. Um, I've had to create a little table here as you can see, it's a Chinese taco, and it's it's significantly out, um, you know, five and three percent between one thousand and two thousand RPM. So, again, not uncommon. Um, so, as I say, I've done all the due diligence um, bits and pieces initially, making sure everything's working. I've calibrated me throttle position sensor up down. So, I've disabled currently the fuel injection because I want to turn the vehicle over. Uh, that's done there. So, I want to get. An oscilloscope reading out of this so you know i'm going to keep auto 720 on currently so i'm going to turn the vehicle over and then i'm just going to click start measurement so right there we go okay that's great news so we've got our uh, 60 minus 2 this is the crank at the top that's our vr signal and we're already set happily on raising rather than falling and then it looks like we've just got one simple single tooth so that is great news it is overlapping the missing tooth though so we will have to set that tail max that in our uh, input settings but that's great news it means that we can just get this running sequentially dead easy it's a really really simple setup uh, so that's great news so we can now disable our uh, fuel injection off and then go to sequential 720 and then we can hopefully go for a start up. Right, we've got a up and running, still nice and cold. Um, so it's actually idling half reasonably. I've had to adjust the idle screw. It's got no idle control valve on it. So I don't think it's gonna be horrendous, but I do think that, you know, if he wants it to feel completely OEM, he might want to have one in the future. This is at 25 degrees. So, you know, it's really not hot. It's nice and cold and it's idling okay but the first sort of you know 20 30 seconds may end up being a bit rough but we'll, we'll see how it goes uh, might be able to do something with uh you know opening the idle a little bit more opening the, the throttle plate a little bit more but let's see how it goes when it's warm okay so we strapped down into the dark <clears throat> okay right i've run out the temperature uh, the fans cutting in and out as expected that's all controlled by the ecu naturally uh, so we're now going to steady state tune this on our dyno. The owner already had it tuned, as I mentioned earlier, um, and he's got a printout of well over 110 horsepower, so-called. Um, this engine supposedly makes 82 out of the factory, so, um, you know, supposedly 20 up, which is, you know, significant for a normally aspirated car, certainly a 1.3 with no major engine mods I can see. Um, but you never know, right? I'll be interested to see. Um, so let's see if it's, a, you know, a dyno dream or whether it's going to make that power. So, yeah, let's spend a few hours on this.
days. What a lovely little car. So didn't put a foot wrong on the dyno. Um, and it has made 116, 117 horsepower. And it's doing that quite consistently. Uh, so we're really happy with that. Um, just, just goes to show. Like I say, those engines are rated to 82 horsepower. It's got like a different inlet and a different exhaust manifold. But, you know, by all accounts, that's released quite a bit of horsepower. So I'm quite impressed with it. Um, I've revved it a little bit harder than it should have, um, you know, or a little bit beyond its stock limiter. Not massively, though. Uh, we're hitting the limiter about 7.2 now. Um, it's, it's not making power there anyway. Um, you know, if you read all online on the internet, they'll so-called go to 8, but I don't see much point in it. The power curve's falling off. So, um, yeah, there we go. Another nice little job, nice little conversion, all sorted. So I'm going to do a couple of cold starts on this thing over the weekend, uh, and then uh, Bill can come and collect his little car again. So thanks for joining us. I hope you found it interesting. If not, I apologise. I always find it very difficult to know what to put up on my YouTube, how whether to go in detail or not in detail. Um, being honest, some of the videos that I put up that are just very generic get the most view count. So it's hard work, isn't it? <laughs> there it is. Either way, thanks for joining us. Genuinely appreciate it. See you all next time. Have a wonderful day.